We reach the 60s, and this is the car that you've chosen to represent that decade. Of course, the Mini, still going strong 29 years after it was first launched. Got myself a crying, talking, sleeping, walking, living dog. While Cliff Richard was number one in the charts, a revolution was about to begin on the roads. A small box-shaped car, unlike anything before it, was just starting to roll off the production lines in two Midlands factories. The Mini was launched in the summer of 1959, and this very car was the first one off the production line. But it wasn't an instant success. Sales were very slow at first, and it wasn't until the arrival of 1960 that people began to realise what a brilliant concept it was, such a big package in such a tiny car. It was only 10 feet long and little more than 4 feet wide. It had 10-inch wheels right out at the four corners with little overhang. The engine was turned sideways to save space. Now, here was a clever feature. The gearbox and transmission were put underneath the engine and they shared the same oil. This was the car that popularised front-wheel drive. It was the first mass-production British car to have it. That gave good road holding and also saved space with no transmission tunnel. Rubber independent suspension was used front and rear for an absorbent ride. The design allowed space for four adults to travel inside, and yet the car weighed only 1,300 pounds once the square body completed the package. But the whole essence of the Mini was one man's personality. Sir Alec Isagonis didn't believe in radios in cars, so there wasn't a provision for one anywhere on the dashboard. It was pretty spartan anyway, just that one great big instrument. And the rest of the car was really fairly basic. These sliding windows, the pull string to open the doors. But the beauty of that arrangement was it did mean there was space for these great big stowage bins underneath. And that's one of the good things about the Mini. It had a lot of place to put things for such a tiny car. The engine is a compact little four-cylinder, 850cc unit shoehorned in under the bonnet. You can reach everything, but there isn't a lot of space to play with. The boot is well packed too. Not a lot of room for luggage once the spare wheel and the battery are already in there. The joy of the Mini right from the start was how easy it is to drive, with terrific visibility all round, light steering that really tells you what the wheels are doing, and a really sporty, fun feel to it, even though it's such an eminently practical little car. It also feels a completely classless car. From dustman to debutante, anyone will feel at home driving it. There were some quirky aspects to driving it. This tiny rear view mirror showed you very little of the road behind. The starting button was positioned right down almost underneath the front seat, had this very long sweeping gear change and the great big steering wheel. But it did give you the feeling of superb road holding with a wheel practically at each corner. The effect of that is to make the Mini feel really stable on the road. It seems to skitter around corners with such verve and enthusiasm that you find yourself smiling with enjoyment at the sheer joie de vivre of it. And that was just one of the elements that made it such a significant little car. Well, the cars had to make the transition from uh, the obvious rear drive layout where the preponderance of weight was on the rear wheels to this new look. And uh, the boot had to go the trunk had to go and the rear wheel had to go further backwards. So it had to change the appearance of motor cars. And uh, once the Mini got going and followed by the 1100, they, the competitors had to react uh, and produce uh, technological improvements in their cars. And from a cold start, of course, we got nothing to contribute to front wheel drive motor cars. No CV joints, no nothing. It all had to be created. The Mini had an engine of 848cc, 35 brake horsepower. Its top speed was just over 70 miles an hour, and the 0 to 50 figure for acceleration was 17 seconds. Average fuel consumption, 43 mpg. The car originally cost £537, and it's now worth between two and 3000 Right, Formula 3.